when asked which CSO or NGO they felt was performing well in advancing human rights, 33.6% of the respondents said Bunge la Mwananchi is more prominent in agitating and protection of human rights, followed at position 2 by Haki Africa at 19.7%. FIDA Kenya was third at 17%. Civil rights defenders was in position 4 with 11%. Muhuri was at position 5 with 8%. Others, 10.7%. The HRCSO survey on experiences of civil society organizations working on human rights in Kenya aimed to gauge the role played by CSOs and NGOs in championing adherence to human rights as provided for in the United Nations Charter and subsequent resolutions by the body's general assembly and as per the laws of the land. This survey sought to provide policymakers and stakeholders with up-to-date data that will guide formulation of appropriate intervention, strategies and approaches in regards to human rights advancement. The survey also sought to access or rather assess the public's perception on CSOs and NGOs involved in protection of human rights and the general feeling of minority groups, um, including women, on the impact of these organizations on protecting their rights. Additionally, the survey assessed the challenges faced by civil society organizations and NG NGOs operating in the country's human rights landscape. May it be brought to the attention of the readers of this survey report of, pro of probable inadequacies that the report may not have covered everything in relation to CSOs and NGOs intervention in advancing human rights. The study was conducted by Precision Analytics uh, Kenya from 26th March to 13th April 2024. The survey covered the following areas. Number one, advocating for policies that promote the welfare of the poor. Number two, holding government institutions accountable on human rights abuse. Number three, promoting the rights of minorities and marginalized populations. Number four, promoting free speech and freedom of assembly. Number five, advocating for the realization of Article 43 of the Kenyan Constitution 2010. Number five, protesting police misconduct. Uh, the methodology, um, PAK gathered responses from a diverse range of CSOs and NGOs working on human rights. The methodology encompassed the following steps. Number one, the survey design. So the survey design instrument was meticulously crafted in consultation with human rights experts, drawing upon established frameworks and prior research. Questions were strategically structured to cover various dimensions, including the regulatory environment, threats and attacks, access to finance and resources, decision-making process, and background information about the organizations. Number two was the sampling strategy. To ensure diverse representation, a stratified sampling approach was employed based on geographical location, organizational size, and focus area. Number three, the data collection. Online surveys were administered using survey as the primary mode of data collection. Questionnaires were sent to select groups and feedback given within 20 minutes. In cases where internet access was limited, telephone interviews and face-to-face -face discussions were conducted to capture responses. Measures were implemented to guarantee respondent anonym anonymity and confidentiality fostering openness and candid responses. Number four was the fieldwork period. The survey was conducted over a 19-day period, spanning from 26th March 2024 to 13th April 2024. This time frame was chosen uh, to allow for adequate data collection while ensuring timely analysis and reporting. Uh, number five was data analysis whereby quantitative data obtained from the surveys underwent rigorous uh, statistical analysis to identify trends, patterns, and correlations. Qualitative data derived from the interviews 
and open-ended survey questions were thematically analyzed to extract nuanced insights and themes. Uh, these were the key findings. Number one, the general condition uh, NGOs and CSOs expressed mixed sentiments regarding the conditions for human rights work in Kenya. There is a great feeling that Kenya experiences incidents of human rights work, uh, human rights abuses on a daily basis, and out of a sample 10 cases, only two uh, get the attention of CSOs and NGOs or other government agencies. 45% of the 51 million citizens in Kenya have knowledge of uh, human rights wholesomely, and this includes the literate citizenry who've gotten uh, the sensitization on human rights. A resounding 30% have an idea of the basic rights of right to life, shelter, food, and health care. The remaining 25%, comprising of children, the elderly in deep rural villages across the country, they have no understanding of human rights, thus their violation goes unnoticed by relevant stakeholders. A significant portion of CSOs and NGOs reported neutral to negative perceptions by the public on their activities, indicating room for improvement in the operating environment. Number two was the regulatory environment. The CSOs and NGOs are regulated by the government through the Ministry of Social Service, are empowered by the Constitution to hold political and economic actors accountable of their work to the public. Many CSOs and NGOs highlighted challenges related to freedom of assembly, association and expression with law enforcement uh, and agencies portraying them as a nuisance to the public uh, order. More so during public engagements to agitate for upholding of human rights. Uh, legal hurdles including transparent laws, political campaigning regulations and anti-terrorism measures were identified as major impediments to CSO and NGOs activities. Court cases of human rights abuses take too long in the judicial processes, hence sabotaging the efforts of seeking justice in scenarios of gross violation of human rights. Threats and attacks was number three. It is noted that the once vocal civil society in Kenya has dwindled within or rather with a damaged relationship between government and the CSOs. This is evidenced by the systematic enactment of legislative, legislative hurdles, administrative harassment, and public campaigns to tarnish the image of CSOs and NGOs. Reported various, from, uh, various forms of threats and attacks against their employees or volunteers and organizations. Uh, both online and offline. Intimidations from state agencies caught up in violation of human rights stand out as the major threat to their efforts to ensure observance to human rights. Coordinated online harassment, vandalism of CSO equipment, negative media campaigns, and surveillance were also among the documented challenges. Number four, access to finance and resources. Finding adequate funding emerged as a significant issue for many CSO and NGOs as many rely on donor financing or some who operate on voluntary basis. Reasons cited for the financial constraints included public budget, cuts, decreased donations, and shifts in government funding priorities. Also, there is a lack of political goodwill to allow CSOs uh, to access foreign funding. The lack of funding throws a hampering effect on the work of civil society organizations in championing human rights to a greater geographical area. Hence, most are, dom are domiciled at specific areas, for instance, Nairobi and its environs. Number five, the decision-making process and participation. CSOs and NGOs expressed varying degrees of participation in national consultations for law and policy making. Challenges such as lack of timely information, unequal participation, and insufficient feedback were commonly reported. Recognition of outstanding institutions among the civil society organizations surveyed Bungela Mwanainchi, 
which emerged as an exemplary institution warranting recognition for its remarkable contributions to human rights advocacy in Kenya. Here is a focused acknowledgement of Bunge la Mwananchi within the context of the HRCSO survey findings. Um, the background, Bunge la Mwananchi translated as People's Parliament, is a gra grassroots social movement and civil society organization dedicated to promoting social justice, democracy, and human rights in Kenya. Founded on the principles of citizen participation and accountability, Bunge la Mwananchi operates at the local level, engaging communities in dialogue, advocacy, and activism. The key contributions, number one, the community empowerment. Bunge la Mwananchi empowers ordinary citizens to participate actively in decision-making processes and hold authorities accountable for their actions. Through grassroots mobilization and civic education initiatives, the organization strengthens communities, voices, and promotes inclusive governance. Number two, the advocacy for human rights. Bunge la Mwananchi advocates tirelessly for the protection of human rights, particularly for marginalized and vulnerable populations. The organization campaigns uh, justice, the, the organization campaigns against injustice, discrimination and abuses, amplifying the voices of those whose rights are often disregarded. Number three, the social justice initiatives. Committed to fostering social justice, Bunge la Mwananchi initiates campaigns and projects aimed at addressing systemic inequalities and injustices within Kenyan society by raising awareness, advocating for policy changes, and mobilizing grassroots actions. The organization strives to create a more equitable and inclusive society. Number four, the community engagement. Bunge la Mwananchi facilitates meaningful community engagement through open forums, public debates, and particip participatory decision-making processes. By providing platforms for dialogue and collaboration, the organization fosters a sense of ownership and agency among citizens, strengthening democratic values and civic participation. Bunge la Mwananchi's dedication to advancing human rights, promoting social, social justice, and empowering communities exemplifies the spirit of civil society activism in Kenya. The organization's grassroots approach, coupled with its unwavering commitment to accountability and inclusivity, sets a commendable standard for civil society engagement in the country. In light of the HRCSO survey findings, Bunge la Mwananchi is recognized as a beacon of, he of hope and inspiration within Kenya's civil society sector. Its impactful initiatives and grassroots activism underscore the vital role that CSOs play in advocating for human rights and fostering democratic governance at the grassroots level. Uh, in conclusion, the Human Rights uh, Civil Society Organization, that is the HRCSO survey, sheds light on the multifaceted landscape of civil society organizations working on human rights in Kenya. Presence of a vibrant civil society is an indicator of positive drivers of social change in the country as they keep the citizenry informed. Mobile individuals to take action against gross violation of human rights and also provide services to the general public. While challenges persist, the findings offer valuable insights for policymakers, stakeholders, NGOs and CSOs themselves to collaboratively address systemic issues and, 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 and enhance the enabling environment for human rights, advocacy and activism. The commendable efforts of institutions like the Kenya Human Rights Advocacy, uh, Kenya Human Rights Commission serve as inspirations for, collect, for collective action and progressive change in Kenya's civil society sector. With the increased technological advancement, there is need of increased vigilance on human rights through online spaces and use of constitutions to defend rights, whether through advocacy or litigation. CSOs and NGOs should endeavor 
to advocate for reforms, including protection of whistleblowers, remove obstacles from human rights and freedoms, and build a rapport with the government to ensure collaboration and also invest in sensitizing the citizens on human rights and invest more in evidence-based research so that, in, so that incidents of human rights violations don't go unpunished. On the other hand, the government has to stop restricting, interfering or placing barriers uh, that curtail CSOs and NGOs operations. Additionally, the government should build capacity for the justice systems to be able to handle human rights cases on time and also sensitize law enforcement personnel on the importance of upholding human rights in the course of their duties. Uh, of the role of CSOs. Survey results. Survey results, public understanding of the role of CSOs. A majority, that is 30.87% of survey respondents, uh, thought that HRCSOs were engaged in tasks related to promoting human rights. Likewise, 27.07% believed that HRCSOs engaged in actions aimed at improving public awareness. 23.6% believed that HRCSOs engaged in development work benefiting general people. 20.87% thought HRCSOs worked in the interest of children. 13.27% uh, stated that HRCSOs worked to expand human rights activities in, uh, to remote areas. 12.67% considered HRCSOs to engage in advocacy on issues of public concern. And 11.27% thought HRCSOs carried out activities aimed at promoting their own business. Public perception on the performance of CSOs. When asked which CSO or NGO they felt was performing well in advancing human rights, 33.6% of the respondents said Bunge la Mwanainchi is more prominent in agitating and protection of human rights, followed at position 2 by Haki Africa at 19.7%. FIDA Kenya was third at 17%. Civil Rights Defenders was in position 4 with 11%. Muhuri was at position 5 with 8%. Others, 10.7%. Therefore, Bunge la Mwanainchi is the highest performer in advancement and championing of human rights in Kenya, according to the survey conducted between 26th March 2024 to 13th April 2024. Precision Analytics Kenya is a firm that conducts research in this country. And uh, we have done a research in this country recently based on human rights. And we've reached out to various organizations, that is the CSOs and the NGOs. And from our research, we came out with findings that indicate the Bunge la Mwanainchi, which happens to be a CSO, and that's an organization in Kenya, uh, emerged to be the best with a 33.6% uh, statistical data compared to the other organizations, uh, which include Haki Africa, uh, FIDA Kenya, and even Muhuri. Uh, this is because basically the other organizations tend to be more official compared to uh, Bunge la Mwanainchi, which tends to be um, uh, very vocal and it is more popular even to the uh, county level. Yeah.